Talk to me about this idea, uh, the idea of having people sleep out and donate to help kids who are, are homeless. I don't know that uh, when we think about the homeless problem, we always think about youth. Yeah, youth homelessness is a hidden crisis in our community. And so basically the One Night Without a Bed campaign is our signature um, end of the year appeal, right? Where we're trying to make the visible, the invisible visible. So youth homelessness is a very invisible, invisible crisis. Young people are living doubled up. They're living in cars. They're sleeping on floors. They're on couches. They're taking the bus back and forth. And so we really wanted to challenge our community to make themselves uncomfortable for a night so that a young person doesn't have to be. And so for one night in December, we're challenging our community to stand in solidarity with the 4.2 million young people who are experiencing homelessness every year in the United States by giving up their bed for one night to sleep on the floor, to sleep on um, the couch, to sleep anywhere that makes them uncomfortable because every day we have a privilege that we don't sometimes recognize that sleeping in a bed, it, it shouldn't be a privilege, right? But it is. And so we are challenging our community to give up their bed for a night, to post about it on social media because we want people to see, right? What, to see the invisibleness of, of youth homelessness and then to make a contribution um, to the Detroit Phoenix Center so we can continue to provide critical resources support and a safe nurturing environment for youth and young adults who are experiencing homelessness every single year. So right. it's a call to action, it's not assimilation. We're not by any means saying that if you're uncomfortable for one night that you understand the grim realities that our young people face every single day. We're just asking for a sacrificial call to action. Yeah. So it, it strikes me that um, you know the challenges for young people who are homeless might look a little different than uh, they would for for adults who are homeless. Can you talk a little about what those challenges are? Yes, um, the challenges definitely look a lot different. So first and foremost, mental health. Young people who are experiencing homelessness are three times more likely to struggle with suicide ideation, thoughts of suicide, and struggle with mental health, having positive mental health, having social permanent connections. Because young people are very transient, it's sometimes very hard to establish those relationships. And then also in the middle of a, a pandemic, right? And if we're saying, you know, wash your hands, you know, um, stay at home as much as possible, wear face masks. If a young person is hopping from place to place to place, um, that's a lot of movement. And then also, if there is no utilities in the home, um, no running water, then hygiene, you know, may be a challenge for these young people. Staying connected to school, um, you, using, you know, technology, having those services are all challenges that young people um, experiencing homelessness face, but these young people are incredibly resilient. They're incredibly resourceful. Mm -hmm. So having a resource like the Detroit Phoenix Center to be able to drop in, to get face masks, to get hand sanitizer, to be able to be connected to social permanent connections, help to improve those negative outcomes that we see statistically. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of people would would ask about whether the solution or part of the solution to youth homelessness is for people just to go back home. Uh, these are children, in, in many cases, minors. Uh, talk about the complications of why they can't just always return home. Yeah, so that's not always possible because a lot of young people that are actively transient or at risk of experiencing active homelessness are running away. They're fleeing um, physical abuse and neglect. They're, they're, they're leaving certain circumstances. Many of them have been involved in the child welfare system. So after they have been discharged from foster care, some of them have literally nowhere else um, to go. Economic downturn, we've seen this pandemic affect all of us at different levels. And sometimes that financial strain just leaves young people literally with nowhere to go. And there's a, those are some of the complications, not all, because it's not a silo issue. It's so complicated and so layered, but it's not just as simple as going back home Yeah. because sometimes they don't have anywhere else to go. Right. And at the same time, um, the traditional uh, supports for the homeless population don't always fit their needs either. 
you can't just walk into a shelter as uh, a, a teenager and be safe even um, uh, among all the adults there. So, I mean, they, they're, they're facing that challenge really on both ends. Absolutely. And also youth homelessness looks very different from adult homelessness. Most young people don't prefer to go to a shelter. And for the sake of this conversation, when we're talking about young people that are experiencing homelessness, we're talking about up to the age of 24. Mm -hmm. Because according to uh, the federal government, a youth is defined up into the age of 24, according to the college admission process. Mm -hmm. So like, just like you said, young people don't feel safe going to a shelter. And many of those services are geared more towards adults so having a, a developmentally appropriate and youth-friendly space is what young people need and also their couch surfing the majority of the population of youth that are experiencing homelessness are, are couch surfing they're hopping from one home to the next home and they're living doubled up there's multiple people in one space they're in hotels um, they're they're in varying living situations Hmm. So we've only got about a minute left, but I, I want to have you talk about solutions, uh, yes. things that would get uh, permanent uh, yes. homes for, for, for kids who don't have them. What, what, what do those look like? Um, absolutely. So that's a wonderful question. So I think that um, supporting uh, organizations uh, like the Detroit Phoenix Center, who provides a continuum of services, um, education and employment, emergency housing, and support, right? When we have education employment that provides social mobility, we provide mental health services, um, a, we provide a continuum of services to meet the young people where they're at at each juncture of their life. So supporting organizations that are doing the work is one way. Of course, raising awareness on the youth homelessness crisis is another. And then advocate is advocacy in a policy arena. Sometimes as human service providers, we're forced to put band-aids on wounds created by bad policy. So really, really advocacy is a way to also um, to be in the sphere of, of ending youth homelessness in our community. 